Hey everybody, it's Lon Seibin, and we're taking a look today at the Netgear S8000. This is a network switch from Netgear that is in their Nighthawk line of products. So it looks a little fancier perhaps than some of the other network switches out there, but in a nutshell, you get the same kind of features here, which is adding additional ethernet ports to your network. So once you plug it into your router, uh, you've got seven more ports that you can plug into this thing to uh, give you additional gigabit ethernet ports on your network. Now what this one adds is some management and that you can actually determine how how these ports operate. This is nothing new. It's been on a number of network switches that have been out for a long period of time that might actually cost less than this one. And we'll explore why this one costs more in this review. And I do want to mention in the interest of full disclosure that I paid for this with my own funds. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review and no one is reviewing this content before it is posted. All right, so let's take a look at the hardware now. As network switches go, this is probably the best looking one I have ever tested and probably the best built. It is a solid block of metal here. They call this a zinc alloy. It weighs a good amount, feels very solid. I don't know if you need good build quality on a network switch, but if you want it, you got it. It'll match your uh, Nighthawk router perhaps. It lights up here in the front and I'll show you what that looks like when I plug it in. On the back here, you've got eight ports. Again, you're going to have to use one of those to uplink to your router because this is not a router, just a network switch. You also have a button here to turn the lights on and off, and that is pretty much it. So what I'm going to do now is plug it into the network. I'm going to show you the configuration screens and how to use it. And we're also going to decide whether or not you need this or if perhaps it's yet another way to extract more money from the gaming community. So let's boot it up and see what it can do. All right, so I got everything plugged in and operating now. My router essentially is connected into port eight here, and then anything else that I plug into the switch will also gain access to my network uh, through that port there. So we are good to go. Now I'm gonna pop over to the web-based control panel that you use to configure this device and uh, show you some of the preset modes that they are steering people towards. It's one of its key features. So I'm gonna click on preset here, and uh, we're gonna pop into this menu, and this is where you have some options to configure how the ports work on here. So for example, if I uh, go over here to media streaming preset, what it's going to do is have port one be for my gaming PC. That one is set to a low priority, uh, but media streaming is set to high. And what that means is that uh, if there is a lot of traffic going through the switch, uh, things from the media streaming PC are going to take priority over anything else on any of the other ports. So basically, uh, port two here will be the top priority port. Its packets go out first before anything else does. And that might give you a bit of an advantage in streaming, especially if you have a very low bandwidth connection and people around the house are doing different things. Now, if you wanna do this manually, you can do that too. So for example, I can go over here to prioritization and then uh, start poking around on each of these ports. So for example, I could say with the edit button here that my gaming computer needs to be medium so my uh, games can at least get out to their uh, game servers okay. And then I'll put the media streaming server on high and then everyone else can be low. So those two devices get priority to that. So let me just apply that real quick. And then I'm gonna show you the other feature here too, which is rate limit. So what you can do here is actually control how fast these ports are. So if my little brother is still doing stuff I don't like him doing, I can send them back to the 90s here at eight megabits per second, for example, and that will uh, limit the speed of port four only to eight megabits per second, even though it can go up to a maximum essentially of a thousand megabits per second. So you do have the ability to kind of get in granularly uh, to each port and adjust how fast they are physically, which could be helpful or not, depending on who's in control of the switch. In order for this to work, everybody in your house has to be connected into this switch in some way. So for example, you could plug in a, a Wi-Fi access point into one of these ports here, and then also have everyone else's computers plugging in through here. If anyone is connecting to the internet on some other device, like your router, for example, this will not police their traffic. So you only will be be prioritizing based on what's inside of this device. And that is why if you are uh, looking to improve network performance, you might wanna look at a new router, like one of their Nighthawk routers or one of the many other mid-range routers that I've reviewed here on the channel from Asus and from Synology and many others that also provide this network prioritization built into the router, which is really probably where you wanna do it, given the fact that the router is controlling what's coming in and out uh, of your home from the internet. So if you're wondering what the differentiator is between this $99 switch and maybe something you can get for 30 bucks, you just saw it. Basically the ability to differentiate how these ports operate as opposed to having them all operate the same. And unless everyone on your network, again, is running through this switch, you're not going to see the benefit of that feature. Now, another key feature they're uh, 
touting on this product in their marketing materials is the ability to turn it into something that's 4x faster than a single gigabit connection through something called link aggregation. Let me show you that setup screen here. So what you can do is set up two link aggregation groups. They call them lags. Even though it's going faster, they call it lag. It's just a mix up between the networking world and the gaming world, I guess. But uh, what you can do here is actually say uh, ports one through four are going to get linked together as R5 through eight. And then if your computer, get this, has four network adapters plugged into it, uh, you can link them all together and get 4x the speed to communicate to whatever is on the other four ports connected uh, with four ethernet adapters on the switch here. So you really don't gain a lot by this, but you could of course uh, designate some smaller groupings. Maybe it's easier to get uh, two network adapters put together. So for example, you could have a uh, network attached storage device. There are many out there that have two uh, ethernet jacks that support uh, link aggregation. So I could say uh, ports three and four are going to be linked together as, as will seven and eight. And I could plug my computer into seven and eight, for example, and my network attached storage device into three and four. And then I can gain some benefit, double the speed essentially of my network through this switch. And that's not something you can do on a dumber switch. So that's one feature that this will give you if you really want to uh, take advantage of that extra network jack on your network attached storage device, you can do that here, but you'll also need to make sure that your computer has two ethernet jacks too. But if you are like most people and only connecting up to a single port at a time, you will see no difference in performance between this smart switch at 100 bucks and a uh, $30 cheapo switch you might be able to get from Netgear or TP-Link or many other manufacturers. Gigabit Ethernet has been uh, maturing for quite a while and it's really working well even on the inexpensive devices. And I have uh, really seen no performance gain whatsoever with this one versus something a lot less expensive. And if you are looking to get into running with a managed switch to kind of learn how it might work, uh, something like this other Netgear product that's only $62 might be worth looking at. It doesn't look as cool, uh, but it has all of the features that you just saw on this one and add some additional ones like VLANs, which allow you to actually isolate things on your network from each other. So for example, if you've got a security camera that's always sending out network packets, you can put it onto its own VLAN and have that traffic separate uh, from your traffic going on other ports of the device here. So it does a lot more and it costs a lot less. And I think that is something to be uh, considering here. So the bottom line is this, if you are looking to uh, improve your gaming performance, improve your streaming performance, uh, look to your router as uh, the place to do that. So go and upgrade to one of their Nighthawk routers. Those are definitely good products. You can look at some others that I've reviewed as well down in the uh, video description there too, to see what might be out there and have your network prioritization happen at the router side because the router is determining what goes in and out of the internet, uh, not your switch. And if there are other things on your network in addition to your switch, uh, this thing will not be able to manage everything. This is not going to become this magical device that suddenly traffics all traffic on your network. Your router does that. If your router doesn't do it, then maybe it's time for a new router and have it do the work for you. And I think that is really where I would recommend you go. So if the notion of having a managed switch is intriguing to you, I think you're better off going with the ProSafe here for less money. And check out what I just highlighted there. Lifetime hardware warranty on the less expensive product, including a lifetime next business day replacement. And I've had to use this before in some other Netgear products and they do it for you. They don't do it on this one. In fact, this one only has a three-year warranty. So you get a lifetime warranty on a product for uh, far less money than you're paying on this quote-unquote gaming device. And I think it's uh, just another profit grab here on the ever-growing hardware business that involves all of this high-end gaming stuff. And this is really not something that is going to give you anything better than what you already have. So again, my advice is go with the cheaper device here if you really want to do a managed switch. But I think for most people, including many gamers, an unmanaged $30 dumb switch will be uh, worlds better than uh, your wireless connection will be. And it's probably a good starting point versus something more expensive and complicated. This is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters, including Gold Level supporters Mark Bollinger and Brian Miller. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.